Did you get the notes all done? <laughs> no. <I'll... laughs> or was I, there... I was working. I just didn't. Yeah. Oh, come on. The hell. Listen, man. Where, where's your head even at these days? <laughs> I know. Try and get mad at me about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because paying clients need work first? Oh, because that's your salary and yeah. not the podcast? <laughs> Welcome, residents, to the Dr. DC Podcast. My name is producer Richard, and across from me is the doctor himself. Hello. I assume that was a cold open then. <laughs> Sometimes you just lead the horse to water, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then you make him sit. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Um, then I make him... I don't know, Go on. Use his big horse dick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's uh, Clydesdale, if you know what I mean. I died in Korea. <laughs> you Oh, now you're doing this? The, the thing you have to listen to a podcast that comes out next uh, That's a Friday? Crossovers, baby. Oh, yeah. No, it just came out yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, or no, today, right. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what the fucking timeline is anymore. <laughs> we've done a lot of recording. What is time? Yeah, we've recorded like we're by the end of today, it'll be like six episodes in four days. Yeah, it's a lot. Which is a lot because they're all like between 90 minutes and like two and a half hours <laughs> yeah we really fucked ourselves over the other night when we did a two hour recording i can't believe that it went that long it didn't feel like it was going that long but i guess that's because the magic is still here yeah because we've just we're, we're just gelling baby yeah. <laughs> are you gelling do you oh, remember that yeah. commercial oh fucking dr Scholl. yeah yeah. Um, yeah i'm gelling each week we talk about the weird and wonderful world of DC while fielding questions from listeners like you. Sure. We've got a review. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Five star review number Major one. Major Boy Ric Flair. 34, that's right. From Amazon, from the uh, the Pure Love Massage Wand Personal Vibrator. Yeah, it's a review left as a comment on a product on Amazon. I've been waiting for so long for this. <laughs> From Michael Haggerty, who says, as good as the Dr. DC podcast, lonely, feeling sexually unsatisfied. <laughs> is, this, is this a review for my wife? <laughs> <laughs> then listen to the Dr. DC podcast. The only podcast that will tickle the taint until the co-host faints. <laughs> and he does. Like three times. <laughs> I also like that you're the co-host. I know. I I take exception <laughs> to this. My fucking show. <laughs> I know that he means like we're cooperative. Mm, sure. But co-host is really like a step down. We're just both hosts. Like, <laughs> I mean, whose show is it? If Is it the lead actor or the director's? <laughs> yeah, you're really directing this. <laughs> I only prep all of the questions. Hey, stop going off script. <laughs> oh, God. I gave you new pages. <laughs> These Canadian sexual gods will feed your every desire with puns and tons of comic fun. Yeah, we're two tons of comic fun and full of cum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. So make sure that... Phone is waterproof because these boys are going to soak your pocket by stimulating those ear canals, making your pants a personal slip and slide. So strap in, strap on, and peg that charger because the Dr. DC podcast satisfies. P.S. The vibrator is good too. Not sponsored by the Dr. DC podcast. And okay, first of all, I'm incredibly horny after listening to that. And I was coming in. <laughs> um, but I I added a little thing that is not part of this review. Yes, there's a note. But it also made me laugh so hard because this this was, review was submitted by screenshot. Yeah. And you could see the review just below this one. So this and ours a, was a five-star review. A five-star review on this vibrator. Yeah. But for us. But directly below that. Directly below that uh, is a... <laughs> is, a one-star review from someone named Shannon, and it read, it broke as soon as I got it out of the box. And I don't know if that means the packaging or... (laughs) (laughs) 
I pulled it out too quickly, and I didn't deal with that well. Yeah, I gripped it too tight, and it just snapped. I gripped it too tight and rose me from perdition. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> I, it's a good thing we're sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I got in a huge argument to, uh, today. It of, can't be related. It is. Uh, <laughs> on the uh, one of the supernatural Facebook pages that I'm on. Okay. And somebody was saying that they they're this this argument keeps coming up with it, which is like at the end of the series, uh, was is was Castiel romantically speaking about uh, Dean? How is this even a debate? I but that, that, that was sort of my argument because yeah. they were like, uh, someone was like, uh, they ugh, they showed an interview with Jared and Jensen, and they asked jensen about this did you know that this was always going to be heading in a romantic anything and he was like his sort of like immediate response was like i didn't play it that way yeah and i don't think dean does no and and, and i think that makes sense yeah someone it's under- unrequited but then jared like steps in front of it and was basically this really long rambly thing about how like i think that it's just like you know the way the, like two brothers like love each other you know and like it's not sexual nah, it's just like jared and I was like, shut the fuck. And so I come underneath and I was like, this is literally the quote of the line that he says right before he he disappears. And it's like, you couldn't have quoted anyways. He's like, he's like, this is a thing that I could never have. And like, it's like, yeah, because it's romantic love. I'm like, they it, told each not, other. It's not requited. Dean no. is not like reciprocating. No. But, but they've like, told each other they love each other. I couldn't forever. imagine watching 15 years of Supernatural and not being ready to accept <laughs> Like the homoeroticism of the show. Yeah, some and some fucking nerd responded to me underneath and was just like, uh, Castiel's a celestial being, so they actually are not very capable of romantic love. And I'm like, go fuck yourself. The show has so much angel fucking. Yes. I mean, I guess that doesn't have to be romantic, but I know. <laughs> still, the point is. Yeah. Yeah. The, oh. sh- the show is all about I know. how people fuck. I know. One it- of the main characters is because an angel and a human fuck. I know. <laughs> infuriating <laughs> we'll get into it in seven years but it's infuriating i couldn't imagine spending that much time invested in supernatural and just denying the, oh, the homosexuality of that yeah show. yeah I was gonna it's, say. it's like the reason to watch that show i mean i don't know if that's that seems a little strong <laughs> <laughs> uh... so thank you for this review yeah, really appreciate it. That's the that's the reason why you listen to this podcast. Yeah, to hear that us makes talk sense. About supernatural. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the homoeroticism. Oh God, please. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, as the third episode of October. Ooh. Ho ho ho! Happy, Happy Halloween! Ah. Jing, 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 jing. Oh yeah, that's right. No. I keep trying to make the jingle bell noise, and then it doesn't. Yeah, it comes out careful. Different. Careful. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> this week we're talking about secret societies. Yeah, like the sort of underground organizations and cults and yeah, yeah, yeah secret clubs and whatnot of of DC. That's your owls and whatnot. Yeah, mm-hmm. among others. Yeah. But yes, absolutely, your owls. Well, I'm I'm very excited. Are about you this. part of any secret societies in real life? I mean, are you, like, be... a, are you like a Freemason or something? <laughs> be... My my uncle's a Mason. Really? Yeah. I uh, no. I don't think they're quite as like satanic as they were, <laughs> were quite as secret as they were. But he is a Mason. Yeah. No, I'm a Templar. Uh, no, I. <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> I was um no, I'm not, but my one of my friends' family grew up in the uh, Salvation Army. Oh okay. and the one thing he was like, that organization sucks so hard. Oh yeah. Big He's time. like they are like I didn't re I didn't realize the way that it worked. Yeah. Like I knew that it was religious y and I and I knew that it was called the Salvation Army. I didn't realize that the religion itself like sets itself up like an army. Yeah. And, and like the priests are like sergeants and stuff. Like it's weird. It's, it's so fucked up. fucked up. Yeah, yeah. It's bad. It's not great. No, religion's bad. Well, yeah. And specifically the Salvation Army's bad. Yeah, yeah. I don't ever support the those like anything Santa that's like anything. will help you on one condition yeah. is like <laughs> nope. <laughs> No, thank you. Really, any conditions? Well, yeah. If they're not just offering help, I got a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I remember uh, it actually just popped up on my time hop yesterday. It was I remember I was 
a few years ago, I was walking by people who were, it was like you pay for an apple and they give the money to the homeless. And it was like to help feed the hungry and they were giving people apples. And I was like, give the people who are hungry the apples. What are you doing? Cut out the middle. Yeah, man. why am I why am I getting the apple? <laughs> I took a photo of it because it just made me laugh too hard. Yeah, that's too many steps. That's a weird thing, right? Yeah. Have you been surrounded by any sort of secret society that you're one of you're aware or unaware of at the oh, time? Oh um... anything in college? Secrets no Canada doesn't really have frats. Yeah, so. we don't really do that particularly. I, I don't think I've ever been initiated by anything. I mean, only good life. Yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, no. But if anybody else has, let us know. Yeah, I'd be curious if anyone has been, I mean, only disclosed to your level of comfort, but if you've been. No, like, two hours. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Never mind. Just tell us. It doesn't matter how you feel. Yeah. No, yeah. you're forced. Gee, oh. Hmm. I mean, much like a cult. Well, there you go. I think we have a question about this later. Are we actually. a secret society? I think we have a question oh, about okay. this later. <laughs> well, let's get into it then. Uh, let's go over to Facebook. Go to the face and the book. Go do the Facebook. First question comes from mm, Josh Gill. Mm, sexy Gill. Oh, yeah. Brim, fill me. <laughs> Brim, fill me? <laughs> yeah. It's me, Wilford Brim, fill me. <laughs> Like to talk to you about diapenis. <laughs> <laughs> me, Wilford Brim, fill me. <laughs> Brim stickers. <laughs> why? Why have we made like a porno Wilford Brimley? <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. I'd like to talk to you for a moment about diapenis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's usually how I pitch my penis to I, most I people. I think this is the most specific voice character we've done since Buffalo Phil Seymour yeah. Hoffman. Yeah. I, I know you've, you've tried regular sized penis, but have you ever tried diet penis? <laughs> uh, you still get a penis with half the penis. I have type 2 diet penis. <laughs> It's a bad podcast. Gotta check my blood oh my god. levels. Oh my god, next week. <laughs> oh my god, next <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. Yeah. So many people listen to this it's now. So many, so many people in the government. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening and you're in the government, I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah. And I I just hope your jurisdiction hasn't extended to like some sort of citizen's arrest <laughs> like, over the airwaves. Yeah. Look. You you had all the clues. You could have saved yourself. <laughs> it's not our fault at this point. <laughs> Josh Gill asks if Vandal re reformed the Illuminati in today's DC. Who would he include? How long could he stay hidden? Yeah, I think the key word here is reformed. Yes, not reformed. Oh, okay. Like he's not trying to make them turn over. A new oh, leaf. he's reassembling. Them. Well, it's written the same way. I know, but it's context, and mm. that's how language works. I've never cared about context before. I know that's why I work for your company. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, meat receipt. Oh yeah, that's right. My loin coin, <laughs> uh, <laughs> flesh cash. <laughs> These are just inside jokes, not on any podcast. And we've now. never done that before. Oh, geez, Louise. Uh, yeah. So Vandal Savage has been a like the Illuminati exist in DC. Yes. Um, which is funny because they're actually like not that prevalent a secret society in DC. In Marvel, the Illuminati are like it's like Iron Man and really? Mr. Fantastic and Doctor Strange and that like they're the ones that like send Hulk into space and shit. Like, oh, they're like a real like cabal of sort of secret stuff in DC. It's like, yeah, there's Illuminati. It's like Vandal Savage and a bunch of other people. There's one character who I think is meant to be George Washington, but with a <laughs> new name. But for the most part, like they're not like Jorge Washington, but they're not like big yeah. characters. Sure. It's not like Luthor. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that shit. Sure. Um, which is sort of interesting. They mostly fought the Time Masters, I think, uh, the Illuminati in DC. Oh, um, yeah, really not like top tier. No, not at all. Like way, way, way low down. Like literally, Vandal Savage is the only name character 
oh, in weird. the Illuminati. Weird. Um, but there are, I think, other versions of things that do implicate Vandal Savage that are still interesting to talk about. Mm -hmm. So on the Young Justice TV show, their version of like the Legion of Doom or the Secret Society of Supervillains is a thing called The Light, which also has more of kind of like a cultish oh, yeah. kind of sound to it. They're the light. They all, like they end every episode with someone going like, and they will see the light. Like it, there's, it's, it's just very heavy handed. But Vandal Savage is the leader of that. That includes Lex Luthor, Queen Bee, Brain, Ocean Master for a bit, oh, you know, wow. Black Manta, um, Rachel Ghoul. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's Clary and the Witch Boy. That's kind of like a a bigger, broader, yeah. Sort of what you would expect from like an Illuminati and the idea that they're called the light, you know, il Illuminati, illuminate like they, they have oh. a similar like, root word kind of thing. I think that's probably the closest you get to like melding the idea of the villain team up, the villain society with the kind of cultish thing of the Illuminati and the like directing global events. Not just the, it's not just a secret club for villains where they plan heists, right? It's that the light is also like manipulating like elections or toppling governments or making secret kind of things that they're like moving the pieces on the chessboard, right? So I think that's the closest you get to like a different version of Vandal Savage leading the Illuminati yeah, yeah. kind of thing. It's in Young Justice. And I think it works really well. I It's not the, really the same thing, but there's a, the Vandal Savage's current secret quote unquote group that he's part of. It's called the Totality, and that is a group made up of some heroes and villains. Oh, weird. It includes, like, Martian Manhunter and Wally West and Lex Luthor and Vandal Savage and, I think, Hawk Girl and someone else. And basically, they their only job is to protect reality. They basically just monitor for things that could retcon, and they stop it from happening. The the amount of like leagues, clubs, organizations, and secret societies in DC is like not for profits in the Yukon. Like everybody's on like three. It's true. Like you don't have time to do it. Like you're just like, oh god, I gotta it's go true. to the Justice League and then fuck. I and gotta... fucking Leviathan like cleared yeah. the board, and then like they're still popping up. Like there's a new checkmate now, and there's like, like <laughs> I just would love to see the calendar for some of these people. They're just like, fuck. All right, oh, god, I'm the treasurer for the league, and then. <laughs> I I mean, yeah, technically some of them should have some sort of charter. Or yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd like to second uh, the I mean, Martian Manhunters. I mean, and that is the thing in the comics. Wonder Woman, well, because it was the 40s or whatever, was... Oh, I, oh, let me guess. It was treated really, really she well. She was secretary for the uh, Justice yeah, Society. Man, there you, go. you know, shit like that. But, Jesus uh, Christ. but yeah, I think the best version of Vandal Savage and the Illuminati is actually not Vandal Savage and the Illuminati. It's him with the light in Young Justice. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the light gave us a stipend of uh, <laughs> your per diem while yeah. in flat of eyes. <laughs> Martian Manhunter. Remember he to keep your receipts so we can reimburse you. <laughs> <laughs> could I have some petty cash? <laughs> I'd, I'd like to make a motion to amend our agenda. <laughs> can I get a second? <laughs> oh, yes, I will do that. <laughs> I will second. <laughs> Thank you, brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to review last month's minutes. <laughs> we discussed further exploration. Of <laughs> Can we please get a new secretary? It's, I just can't listen I, to brain it's anymore. Just, it's too, too much, much. man. <laughs> <laughs> I was voted in. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Grod. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to, we have rules here. Raise your hand if you want to talk. We're talking about that in like in three more items first. We can't have a standing agenda item of bananas. Yeah. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> tell you, this fucking this society's bananas. B A N A N A S, you know what I mean? <laughs> I do not understand. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, brain. <laughs> I mean, we've talked about it before. I love, I love a little like mundane look, like at bureaucracy yeah, within like in like superhero shit. That's my favorite thing in the whole world. So I love Loki. Yeah, it's great. <sighs> All right, next question from 
<laughs> Stephen Marion Almagro, who asks, please talk about Project Cadmus. How did it or- originate and what is its purpose? Right. Pretty sure Project Cadmus started with the Newsboy Legion, like former members of the Newsboy Legion. Yeah. But essentially, the short version of it, I mean, so it, the the clue is in the name. Cadmus in Roman or Greek myth um, would he, uh, he basically sowed dragon's teeth into the earth and like grew an army sort of thing. Yeah. Project Cadmus, their focus, their specialization is in uh, like genetics and cloning and things like that. Um, you get uh, you like like Double X is a, a, a sort of psychic character kind of from Project Cadmus. That's where uh, in some, you know, in some versions, that's where Superboy comes from, the clone of Superman and Lex Luthor. I mean, it's uh, it's. Um, uh, Golden Guardian or, or just the Guardian. Like, there's a bunch of sort of Project Cadmus cloning projects and using genetic material and trying to enhance super abilities and, and things like that. But it all comes from just that idea. Yeah, like growing an army. It's sort of like uh, like Project Cadmus is like, well, it, what if? I mean, certainly in the cartoon, they played the angle of what if the supers turned against us? What would we do? Well, this is our way to fight back. We're going to make our own kind of shit. Mm hmm. Um, I mean, that's the, that's the very broad strokes of it. I mean, it's a pretty, Project Cadmus is a pretty involved side of things. I think maybe it started in the 90s? Actually, no, it was probably earlier than that. I think you get a lot of Project Cadmus stuff later, like 80s and 90s. But sure. It might have started in like a Jimmy Olsen comic or some shit like mm. that. In the way that like Dark Side also started in a Jimmy Olsen comic and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. God, did he? Yeah. Jesus. Darkseid's first appearance is in a an issue of Superman's, Superman's friend, pal. Yeah, Jimmy yeah, yeah, Olsen, yeah. Jesus Christ, that's so stupid. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially Project Cadmus. They're like a very secret kind of rogue, sometimes government, sometimes kind of like off the books, yeah. uh, cloning and experiment and genetic experimentation facility. Wow. And that's that's what they do. Wow. Yeah. All right. Next question comes from We've Only Just Dan Dunn, who asks, which DC cult would be the best to make a documentary series on? Who? Which cult would be the best to make a documentary series on? Well, I mean, the best, the best documentary series are the ones that either like where everybody dies, right? Or they end up in like some giant standoff at the end. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah so i guess we're saying yeah what cult i mean maybe like the cult of blood the church of blood Hmm. which is uh so the character brother blood is the leader of the church of blood um basically like it's about evil and stuff like that in the new 52 they tied the church of blood a little bit to like the power of the red which i think is an interesting move and i i like that yeah um actually he might have been kind of tangentially connected to that before that anyway maybe through animal man but um i think that's kind of interesting it starts in this eastern european nation called zandia And if I'm not mistaken, it's like there's like an occupying force or something. And these priests like revolt and they kill all of the soldiers and they put all of their blood in this one pool in the church. And then like the one guy like bathes in it and he's like, now I have power. And he becomes the first brother blood. And then it's like kind of like the Mongol thing we were talking about. There's sort of like a succession by like killed by your successor sort of thing Mm -hmm. of the brother's blood, like through time. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's pretty dark and grim and it's like tied to like a sort of like military kind of history and stuff like that. And I think it's tied to like the crusades and shit is like maybe when the occupation was happening. Mm hmm. Zandia in DC is also an interesting place because it's kind of like, what's the Marvel equivalent? Like Madripoor in Marvel? Like one of these places where it's like a villain haven. It's like there's no law. There's no extradition. It's kind of like 
you know, I think the most recent character to visit is probably Wonder Woman uh, in Wonder Woman and Max Lord, I think, go to Zandia and just like it's been in the last like 15, 20 issues or something like that. Um, so that might be kind of interesting because you get a little bit of like you're making this documentary in this like seedy part of the world and you're getting a glimpse of the underworld and then you're also talking about history in the past and there's obviously like the sort of horrific iconography of blood and shit like that. Like, yeah. If you're looking for ratings, Church of Blood might be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, for something that's kind of funny, the Cobra cult. Well, yeah, Cobra. Because yeah, I mean, <laughs> I this that's one of those ones where you could see like you could see them making it to make fun of them yeah. in the way that like you make Tiger King or something, where it's like they believe in the return of Kali Yuga, the like snake god or whatever. Yeah, you kind of like cut to someone rolling their eyes, like <laughs> yeah, he's like I'm just doing it to get laid. Yeah, and then the, then there's like a sect that broke off. It's like, Oh yeah. Kali, you go. We've all heard it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, uh, the black glove. Black glove is interesting. Cause that's from Morrison's run on Batman. Yeah. That's, uh, it's like a group of like wealthy Gothamites in some ways. The black glove is kind of like a predecessor, a proto version of what the court of owls. Yeah. Become totally. They're not really connected, and I think the Black Glove is sort of mostly forgotten. Yeah. But that idea of like the wealthy, the socialites, and that having this sort of secret cabal of of uh, power and 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 that sort of thing is, is essentially the foundation of the Court of Owls as a concept is built on later. So Black Glove's kind of interesting that way. I think it's, I think the Black Glove is inherently less capable or competent. Well, that's what I think is interesting. <laughs> that's why I think it's good, like documentary fodder, because it's like. I, I like the idea that it's like one person had this idea that's way more into it than the rest of yeah. them. And it's like all these rich people are like, oh, yes. The, What's the, his name? Simon Hurt? Yeah. Is that? The, yeah. yeah. So it's like all these like rich people are like, oh, like I'll like be part of this like secret club and we'll do dark things. And then they like sacrifice somebody for like to the bat god. And they're like, oh, this is. Yeah. <laughs> it ha- does have that feeling of like, oops, that was an accident. Yeah. Ooh, this is a little bit farther than I intended, actually. Uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to put on a mask and fuck my friends. I, yeah, I just saw Eyes Wide Shut, yeah. and I thought this would be a good way in. Yeah, and the leader's like, we're going to fucking raise the god of bats. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, Barbatos! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. It does feel like it went, like, a bunch of people were just like, ooh, yeah. like Yeah. I'll go to one of these. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I'll wear a black glove. That's fun. Yeah. It go- goes with everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, wait, we're doing what now? Huh? Hmm? Bat cog? <laughs> it's true. That's yeah, it, it is. It's inherently less competent, mm-hmm. which is funny. Uh, that's like those clubs that, like, from like the the when the United United States first uh, like was created, and there's all these like secret clubs, but like like Ben Franklin was like way creepier than everybody remembered, and <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. it's like he just likes to fuck everybody, and like. Yeah. Mr. Frankie's fucking club. Yeah, like <laughs> that's probably what he called it. Yeah, I would think so. Mr. Frankie's fucking club. Hey, 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 hey! Frankie says, "Relax." Oh no, <laughs> oh, that's what that song's about. <laughs> yeah, Ben Franklin wanted to fuck you. <laughs> Relax, don't do it. When ben you want it, gonna do it. When you want to constitute it, <laughs> when you want to constitute it, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> That was pretty good. <laughs> uh, all right. Next question comes from Chicken Maddie. Oh, buck buck. That's right. Matthew Poulter, who asks, which DC character is definitely going to get arrested in their lifetime for running a sex cult? Will they go on TV and rant about how they're fighting for their lives? Uh, the cl- character I'm thinking of is Chloe from Small. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> Did you like that meme I sent you yesterday? Yeah. yeah. There was like, a, uh, I found a meme that was, uh, it was like all of the images from the DC fandom with like like the little like uh, border like thing. And the Chiron. Yeah, the Chiron or whatever of DC fandom, but it was like announcing a new like entrance into the Flash movie, and it's just a photo of Chloe <laughs> in like prison. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Uh, Somebody say. <laughs> yeah, that's what she's been singing. Uh, no, she was complicit, man. She was recruiting. That's yeah. the most fucked up bit. I mean, she's also a victim in her own way, but it's pretty messed up. Yeah, all of it's messed up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess other than Chloe from yeah, the, I know from Smallville feels like you're uh, just trying to get that joke out. <laughs> 
Yeah, and now we have. Okay, well, if you had to think, like, who is a character that you think is, like, would be, like, cult susceptible? Oh, interesting. Um, I mean, probably any of the Robins. Right. Because, I mean, they got taken in by a (laughs) a vigilante, like, rich person. They're used to being adopted by a stranger. Yes, into, like, a weird way of living. Right. Yeah, the, the specifically sex cult is the dark part of this question. Mm-hmm. Harley? <laughs> yeah, I think Harley's experience, though, with the Joker, she has all the warnings. Like, I think Fair. Harley is almost cult proof mm. because of her experience with the Joker and oh, shit like that. Superboy? W- like, which one? Uh, Prime. Superboy Prime? Yeah. The angry one? Yeah. He's vulnerable. I guess that's true. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The, the, this is a weird question that I'm not entirely <laughs> sure how to answer. And feels like all roads lead to the bad one. I, I'm gonna throw one out here. Sure, Garth, the first Aqualad. Sure, it's not specifically about a sex cult, but like just being cult susceptible. Yeah, Garth was like considered an outcast in Atlantean society. There's this weird prophecy about purple eyes or shit like that. And sure. he has purple eyes and they were like, kill him. And Aquaman's like, no. And there's a whole thing like that. And, and I remember after Aquaman died, he was, he was so desperate to win kind of like the respect and the approval of Atlanteans that he was like begging Mira to exhume Arthur's body and let him be buried in Atlantis. And she was like, he wouldn't want that. And he was like, I don't give a shit what he wants. Oh, interesting. And I think that kind of like desperate approval seeking thing. Plus Garth is tied more to sorcery and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like I, I, I think maybe, and he rebelled against Aquaman. There's a little bit of like a parental, like a daddy issue sure, thing there. Yeah. Like I, I think you could recruit Garth into a cult. Yeah, that's totally believable. That's my feeling yeah. about it, especially if it had some sort of sorceress angle to it. Mm-hmm. That's my that's my thought, is that the ideas of like rules and traditions, things that if he were to follow them would gain him respect and admiration. Yes. That he would you know be safe within that group. Definitely. I feel like you could recruit Garth to a cult. So yeah. I don't know if that specifically applies to a sex cult, but generally. I mean aren't all cults at the end of the day sex cults. A lot of them seem to be. Yeah. It's like, it may not be for everyone, but somebody. If they're run by men. Yes. I don't know if they're run by women that you find the same sort of thing. That's another question. Is there women run run cults? Almost certainly somewhere, but do I know any or can name them? Because they're they're well run. That's why. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You'd never hear about them. Yeah. Hashtag CEO. All right. Wait, what would you call an undersea cult? Uh, like a branch Marinian? <laughs> Boo. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, let's leave Facebook and head on over to Twitter. Twitter. First question comes from an organ nightmare. I got no. Yeah, that's. I mean. Do, 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 do. When I eat too much spicy food or greasy food, it's an or organ like nightmare. That, I have a real organ nightmare. Yeah, there yeah. we go. We got there. Yeah. Organ nightmare asks, "Can you shed some light on the various Superman cults?" Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think there is there's some exploration of like Superman worship. Really. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is from. The series 52. I've got that. uh, The one that takes place uh, right after Infinite Crisis, Mm -hmm. and it's the year where Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman fuck off. Yeah, I've got got a few issues of that, yeah. Uh, So one of the plots of that story is about uh, elongated man, Ralph Dibney, trying to investigate this, like, people are like, He's been sent like this symbol and people are trying to resurrect his wife. Oh, no. And the symbol is an upside down shield of the House of El. Oh. Which apparently in the story is a symbol of resurrection. Sure. It's called the Cult of Connor. It heavily implicates Cassie Sandsmark, Wonder Girl, who wants to bring Connor Kent back, who dies in Infinite Crisis. Yeah. 
Um, and so it's this like whole thing about like resurrection, but it's all like modeled on like Krypton and Kryptonian tech and, and uh, all these kind of like beliefs and stuff like that. And it's sort of like a, it's a cult that Cassie Sandsmark, I, I deliberately avoided talking about her in the previous question because she is in a cult. Yeah. It, it's not, it's no longer about who would do it because she did do it. Um, and they like a bunch of the heroes have to like infiltrate it, you know, like like Ollie and Hal and them like have to go undercover. Oh or yeah, maybe not Hal, uh, Kyle. I guess I can't I can't exactly remember, but a bunch of heroes sort of infiltrate and have to take it down. Uh, but it it sort of drives Ralph Dibney on this quest of like, no, there's a way to bring her back, blah blah blah. And then he ends up being kind of like duped and betrayed and by by Felix Faust and, and shit like that. But um, that's definitely one. I mean, a thing that we've we haven't really talked about very much about Krypton is that Krypton is also religious. I think it's very easy to think of Krypton as like Vulcans. Oh yeah, I always forget. And it's about because that. we're always talking yeah, about yeah, Jor-el yeah, yeah. and science, and they have a science guild and a military guild, and it just it all feels very procedural and logical and sure. shit like that. But like Kryptonians are deeply religious. Like they have a sun god. His name is Rao. Uh, mm-hmm. which is the name of their son as well. Um, they have other gods whose names I don't remember right now, but like each guild kind of has like a patron God. There's like a yeah. patron God of like the labor guild and the science guild and the military guild. And the, there is a religious guild. Um, oh, what's the character's name? Thara. Akvar. Or something like that. It's the Kryptonian it's a who takes. <laughs> we can't repel spirituality of that magnitude. Uh, she <laughs> takes over the religious guild on <laughs> on Krypton. Um, like uh, Kry- Kryptonians are deeply religious. So I mean, as much as we we are calling religion a cult, there is that kind of thing. Like there was a story in the Brian Hitch kind of run on JLA mm-hmm. uh, from a few years ago where. Like Rao came to Earth, and then like people on he he started just making things better. He was like, "Here's more crops, boom! Here's more <laughs> like oh. boom!" He was just doing shit, and then he like wanting people to worship him and stuff like that. People on Earth were like, "Yeah, thank Rao. Yeah. We love this shit." And it, it became a thing where it's like, "Well, no, they're not giving this willingly, and what do you want in return?" Yeah, yeah. you know all those kind of big questions, but. Yeah, I mean, like, Rao does exist. Kryptonians do have gods in the way that Martians have gods and other, you know, uh, Tamaranians have gods and that. So, yeah, Krypton is weirdly religious, which may actually is still keeps them pretty in line with Vulcans. Vulcans are also weirdly spiritual, not necessarily religious that they believe in a god, but, like, they have all those meditative practices mm-hmm. and things like that. Klingons in Star Trek are very religious, like... You never really get rid of religion, even in sci-fi, and 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 Krypton is no exception to that. Yeah. I think we forget it, but yeah, they've they're they got their kind of superstitions and shit like that too. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, all right, next question comes from Hey Braydon. Yes, the donkey rises. Who asks? What is the history of Cobra? Oh Jesus! And what is the common goal and beliefs of their members? Ah, uh, yes, Cobra. The 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 shitty Kirby uh, last creation as he was walking out the door. Okay, <laughs> so Cobra, the Cobra cult, they believe in the uh, they worship a snake god called mm-hmm. Kali Yuga. Yeah, I think at a certain point, well, they they believe that. I think part of it is meant to it's meant to evoke the sort of like. Lovecraftian eldritch god. Things. Okay. Like what what do they call them in Hellboy? Like a, the Audru Jihad, like stuff like that. Your Cthulhu's? Yeah, that sort of shit. Yeah. And I think part of their belief is that there were there's like a prophecy that someone will be born that's powerful enough to bring it around or shit like that. And they it's like twins are born and they either kill one or one dies and they pick the other one and make him cobra or king cobra or something like yes that. there's all these kind of sects and fractured bits of the cult and, and shit like that uh they i think they they use like genetic engineering and stuff like that they're trying to make themselves superior they believe snakes are superior i think at one point they had either the tech or the sorcery to make people's bodies turn into just piles of snakes <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> they, like as you do, sure. The Cobra Cult is kind of weird. Here's a weird thing about the Cobra Cult. They have fucking Lazarus pits. Really? They're the only group that I can think of other than the League of Assassins yeah. that has like pretty ready and easy access to Lazarus pits. I thought Lazarus pit was just a one thing. It, I mean, it sort of depends on the story, but no, they, there are pits. Pits. Um, pits. <laughs> it's my favorite part of the last Harry Potter is when when Ron is just like, yeah, I can I can open that thing. And he's like, what? He's like, nah, I've been listening to you go <laughs> for enough years that, you know, yeah. what? I kind of like that moment because they're treating it like it's this like crazy get. I yeah. mean, it is because he just inherently yeah. knows it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still just a language. Yeah. Yeah. Opera singers don't learn other languages. Yeah. Well, yeah. You could just mimic, mimic the it. sounds. Yeah, yeah. So I got that. It's weirdly a moment I liked in Harry Potter where it's like, yeah, once you hear him do it, you can just do it. Yeah. It's just it's so funny. It it's is just, funny. Sah, sah, sah. <laughs> <laughs> Spent seven years doing this, Harry, watching what you do and then just doing it poorer. Yeah. I was bored for this. Yeah, I've been holding on your coattails long enough. I'm sure I can pretend to be you for five seconds. Um, yeah, so the Cobra Cult has... Yeah, I, I think they think Kali Yuga is going to come and bestow them power and sure. shit like that. And it's Yeah, it's about snake supremacy, kind of. Here's the thing. In a world, in a universe where gods are things that people worship and are real like right like all the gods that people worship seem to be for the large part real in the dc universe right yeah so so there must like and and fairly regularly given evidence i think kali yuga does exist yeah it, totally yeah part of the problem no like so, in real life i think kali yuga exists. oh yeah oh sweetie hmm? uh <laughs> but here's the thing if you know that all these other like higher power, like why worship the snake woman? When you're like, there's like a sun god that I know is there. It, it, I I I know a hundred percent what you're saying. Because like part of the thing on but Earth, part, part of the thing that they believe, I think, is that like Kali Yuga is again because we're, it, we're, I think we're riffing on that like eldritch god. Sure, thing, sure, yeah, yeah. That like it's like a power beyond yeah, the power yeah. that's gonna come and just like wipe the slate clean, yeah. chaos reigns, like that kind of shit. Because here it's like. The, part of the reason why everybody sort of believes in a lot of gods is here because there's no proof that any of them exist. So you can kind of just be like, I mean, I'll take a shot on this one. Right. But like there you're like, no, I know that there is like this god here. And it's like, this one's a snake god. Like, it just feels like you should I, I go mean, after the more powerful There's one. a lot of insane existential questions that we don't necessarily ask in our comics. Like, I would just know? worship the, the presence because it's like, that's that's the one on top, right? Like, that's how it works. Well, and then there's also the thing of like, we're only exploring it now sort of on the science side, sure. but how much does the general public know? Yeah. You know, like the general public now in DC is aware of the multiverse mm -hmm. and knows about retcons and knows so that, weird like their history has been changed multiple times they just know that shit now yeah it, it and so like and it's interesting watching the comics deal with that like it's a cool idea but then if you think from the general public side before that mm. yeah Rao shows up and has all these amazing gifts but from the public perception what's the difference between recognizing Rao as a god which they yeah. do for a bit or just being someone who can teleport shit into yeah, place yeah we've got a lot because of because once powers. the Justice League beats him do they still go like yeah the Justice League's powerful but but I still believe in that guy because he's a god it's like well or do they go like the Justice well, Leagues are god what, uh, yeah. what is or do, do people go like well what's a god like, yeah. do they have an understanding the way we do as readers on the outside that, like, no, 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 some people are gods. Yeah, they're just like, they're, a god is just somebody that Justice League, Justice League hasn't beaten yet. Like, yeah, like, so the question of what do they understand that shit to be is also different. So it, I, I think you're right. It is funny in a world of all of these beings, some of whom are extremely tangible. Yeah. To place your worship in a hypothetical other one. Yes. <laughs> It's very but, funny. I'm just like, yeah, I, I also. I totally agree. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guess maybe the thing is that technically there's still kind of some of that like lack of understanding of the position of all of these beings in like the sort of like you order just, of the universe. You know what I mean? Like from the ground level, what's the difference between the idea of Kali Yuga and just seeing Zod? Like, you know, like, do be they be a church of Morrison? <laughs> Because oh. that's the one who's the top. The like, writer? Yeah. Except he gets killed. Or oh, they get, yeah. I mean, he, they get he killed. in the comics. 
got killed. Like the writer. By who? Uh, I, oh, I don't remember. Someone dumb. Oh. It's in an issue of Suicide Squad or something. I love that that dumb person becomes God then. It's like, I, I mean, you take God Takes out. Takes the typewriter yeah. and just starts like. That's very funny. Like Metatron style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. God, I can't wait for it to get there. Fucking Cobra though. I mean, definitely like a lesser yeah. cult, I would say. Fought Batman and the Outsiders a bunch. I think fought Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Justice Society, I think. You know, like they I think they made the rounds. Cobra exists, they're out there, but it's like yeah. on the scale of cults and societies, they're lesser. I would yes. I think I think even in continuity, they're lesser. Yeah. Uh, all right. Moving on. We're leaving Twitter and heading on over to Instagram. Now we're going to Instagram. Take some questions and answer them. First question comes from Kaz Haas. I can Haz Haas. I can I, I, can I Kaz Haas. Who asks, how did the Court of Owls go unnoticed for so long? Oh, boy. Well, uh, yeah. It's... Th it's an interesting notion, the the patience of the Court of Owls. You know, it's all these kind of like wealthy families and things like that um, in Gotham. This sort of cabal of power. And they have these talons, these sort of eminently trained assassins. And each, there's only ever one talon. And then the talon comes in and takes the spot of the old talon by having to face and kill them after going through this crazy labyrinth and all this kind of shit. Like, there's a lot of real intense kind of cultish initiation and things like that. How did they go unnoticed for so long? Well, they go unnoticed because the, that was that's the the purpose of them is the manipulation behind and keep in mind they were in power they weren't trying to get oh power. yeah no no they I were it's a lot harder they were to, running it's fucking a lot Gotham. harder yeah. to stay in the shadows when you aren't in power but they were and then this batman kind of phenomenon comes along and they watch that and they watch what's happening with these super villains and they're like do, do we move it like, no we need to figure this out first and so the idea that like time passes and they're trying to gauge the sort of rhythm of what is Batman's Gotham and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they're just doing it from the shadows. They're watching him. They learn everything about him. They're watching the villains. They learn everything about them. And it's no threat to them because they still are behind all of these other bigger pieces of machinery mm -hmm. and, 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 and stuff like that. So I, I think it's the, it's the patience. It's the fact that they were, in power mm -hmm. that's what kept them hidden for so long until the power balance shifts and they're like no batman is making too much of a dent in this thing we got to deal with it yeah now you're calling out you know like you, you have to move out into that thing you know keep in mind people have heard of the court of owls they're 100 percent secret because the whole thing in that story is that there's the old rhyme you know uh i can't remember like you know no one says not a whispered word is said Something, something, they send a talon for your head kind of thing. Like, there, it's like a children's rhyme thing that, like, Thomas yeah. and Martha told Bruce, and, like, people know of that shit. Yeah, milk, milk, lemonade around yeah. the corner. Re you. Remember, Bruce. <laughs> milk, milk, lemonade around the corner, talons are there. <laughs> <laughs> milk, milk, lemonade around the corner, I'll park the car. So you yeah. just go through the alley, <laughs> and I'll meet you back there. Um... <laughs> Uh oh, fudge is made. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Master Wayne. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the short answer of it, though. Is, sure, is yeah. that they had the power. Why declare themselves? The, the power. Their power is their secrecy. Yeah. So there's no reason for them to move out of the shadows until Batman upsets the order Balance, of things yeah. too much for them. And that's what, what's so interesting about that story, too, because Batman is like, no, Gotham is my city. And then all of a sudden he's like, "Oh fuck! It is not my city." Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't even know that I there's have like failed the city. He doesn't even recognize like structurally there are like secret rooms in Wayne Tower that the court has put there. Like oh really? The court is both structurally and I gotta read that book again. and metaphorically woven into every inch of Gotham. It's their city. And so what's so interesting about that story is Batman like being completely thrown off his footing, where all that confidence he has. All of a sudden, he can't trust anything. Shitty detective. 
Mm. I mean, he's also like the last guy to show up to that fucking detective. Well, I know. <laughs> God, it's a great story. Uh, all right. Second question. Last question on Instagram from Jack Stonewall. Stonewall. <laughs> You're yeah, gonna cream this cement. Yeah, General Secretary Gorbachev, jack That's off this stuck. wall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all right. Is that like a? I am not sure this is accomplish what you want. Do but, you uh, do, do I pull something or put something in something? Is, is symbolizing mutual understanding. We will. Finish on each side of the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Our uh, acid cum eating its way through <laughs> until wall crumbles and falls. Yes, yeah, so that this makes sense. Americans have acid cum, correct? Yeah. Right? That's I've been touring Chernobyl and Yeah. <laughs> we all have acid cum. <laughs> I think it's the final evolution. Jack Stonewall asks, how does one get inducted or infiltrate? The Newsboy Army. Like the Newsboy Legion? <laughs> the Newsboy Legion is like a war era team of like juvenile delinquents. You got to learn how to dance first and sing. Um, <laughs> yeah. We need Crutchy. Yeah. And we... <laughs> yeah. That's the only newsy I can name. Yeah. Was... <laughs> <laughs> because the like elegance in which it was uh, uh, named. Very was... sensitive. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Crutchy. Yeah, go hang out with Blackie. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. Look, I didn't do it. Yeah, and Spud, our yeah. Irish member. <laughs> hey, don't talk about me like that. <laughs> uh, that went Italian, didn't it? Well, <laughs> Bruno. I'm Bruno. <laughs> well, that's Portuguese and Irish. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. So. The newsboy army. What the fuck? They is were it? yeah, they were like juvenile delinquents, like street urchin kind of kids. And then it's Jim Harper is kind of the one that kind of wrangles them, and they yeah. become like not like superheroes, but like kind of like I, th I think they sort of function like informants a little bit. Yeah. Was did did Catwoman run around with them when the, she was young? The newsboy legion? Yeah, no. I don't think so. I, I mean, feel like they were like toying that. a bit with that in the Gotham show. Oh, fuck, maybe. I was probably out by then. Well, no, that shit was right in the beginning. When, like, Because she was like part of like this like small like gang. But are they the newsboy legion? I mean, I don't know. There's no reason why they I mean, be. I definitely didn't clue into that if yeah. that's true. But I anyways... Mean, uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess if you're trying to join or infiltrate, you also need to start that way. You got to be like, learn how to fossey. Uh, yeah. yeah, one of you goes up and goes like, "Hey, Mister, the mighty swell hat you got there," and someone else comes up behind and pickpockets. Like, yeah, do you know how the word is extra? Can you say extra? <laughs> extra, extra. <laughs> Can you throw your hat up in the air? That's a really important piece. Uh, I can't. I can't name any songs from Newsy. I know. I was I about to do the song about tomorrow. That's I know. Song. I know. It's. I. I can't. I got yeah. no. I got no Newsies. No. I made My wife could do it. She stage managed like the youth production of Newsies from a couple years ago. Yeah, I made a bunch of artwork for it. Oh right, I yeah. remember that. Yeah, you did all of like like spitting newspaper. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I don't know. Fucking. I think that's be, it. Yeah, be, be like a poor. Yeah, be a poor. <laughs> Be a young poor. Yeah. In the 40s. Yeah. When news was a thing. Yeah. And children were able to work. Yeah. The good, the good old, old days. days. <laughs> Before all these liberals came in yeah. and told us that kids shouldn't have to work yeah, when men 14 were... hour days, seven days a week. Yeah. Where men were men and children were labor. labor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's leave Instagram and head on over to Reddit where everyone's nice and no one's ever mean. First question comes from Constipated Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> I love the names on our subreddit. <laughs> okay, give me a Constipated Gandalf. Um, oh, a wizard is sometimes late. <laughs> <laughs> but usually not this yeah. late. But he... <laughs> Takes a shit precisely yeah. where he means to. <laughs> Don't force it, Gandalf. That's not good for you. You, you... shall pass. 
<laughs> That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. It's just sitting tired. It's like, go back to the shadows. <laughs> He has to amp himself. I am a servant of the secret fire. We'll move the flame of Hano. <laughs> Fly, you poo. <laughs> uh, I wish I had never shit. So do all who live to see such times. <laughs> that is not for them to decide. All there is to decide is what to do with the shit that is given to you. <laughs> Oh, God, I like Consummated Gandalf. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am looking for someone to share in an adventure. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> We've gone too far. I'm picturing him in the stall and all the dwarves outside. Like, oh, From cold and deep. <laughs> and corn right through. <laughs> the spice was flowing. <laughs> With snakes, but holes. <laughs> These are such specific jokes. <laughs> oh, that's right where I live. I was like, where, that's right where we come alive, baby. Right where I fucking live. Oh, yeah. Uh, Constipated Gandalf asks, who leads the Court of Owls? Right. Talon? The Grandmaster. No, Talon is like the agent, like the assassin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You there know, are, the, the Talons there are, are like, many Talons, yeah. Well, there are now because they only... For a long time, it was only one talent, sure. but then they finally developed with this uh, substance called Electrum, yeah. which ends up being the seventh metal. Sure. Because there are 10 metals yes. in existence, like 10 classes of metal. Yeah. Electrum is the seventh metal, and the eighth metal is the metal of the gods. What is nth? Nth metal is the ninth metal. Oh, okay. And, and then, then the tenth metal is element X, which is the metal of creation. So did you say nth or tenth? <laughs> uh, <laughs> your dick is small. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so they use electrum as a means of like reanimating and resurrecting. So then they have an army of all their dead talons. Oh, who yeah. Can't be permanently maimed or killed Hell or anything yeah. and they keep coming back the only thing that can stop them is extreme cold um, better than wood I guess <laughs> <laughs> I know what I have to do the only thing that can stop them is wood yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right so but the the grand master though is like like the court of owls is not the talons the talons are like their their enforcement arm the Court of Owls are the people, like, the board of directors, you know what I mean? And there is, like, a, a Grand Master. They have a different mask. All the Court of Owls have just those plain yes, white, white masks. masks. The Grand yeah. Master has this very ornate gold owl mask. Um, I think... Well, so I, I'm not going to be able to name all of them, but one of them, at least from the Talon series, he calls himself like the true Grandmaster, and his name is Sebastian Clark. Uh, there's also one called uh, John Heathcliff or something. I, I'm messing up the name. It, they're basically just like people with names, though. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like they're just rich people with names, essentially, mm -hmm. are, are Grandmasters of the of the Court of Owls. I'm not sure who the current one is because I think maybe the Court of Owls got mostly dismantled in Gotham, mm -hmm. but there's the bigger Parliament of Owls like worldwide. Like oh. the organization expanded. And I think that happened in Grayson or in Nightwing or one of those sure. books or something like that. So like, I don't know who is like the Grand Grand Master of like the Parliament of Owls or whatever, but... Um, yeah, they're just people, though, is the short answer. Like, and some of them get killed by ta like the Talon, uh, uh, Calvin Rose, who rebels and shit like that. You know, basically, once they come out of the shadows, they've got a short shelf life because things go... Literally, the, the thing that 
takes down the court of owls is them stepping out of the shadows. Yeah. Them stepping out to confront Batman is their undoing. Mm. It starts with Batman like disrupting their operation. It continues with Talon rebelling, like Calvin rebelling against them. Like the dominoes all fall for the court. Yeah. It, the worst thing they could have done was come out of the darkness. Yeah. You know? It's not fair. Yeah. Next question from Dante's Fire, who asks, who is in charge of the not so secret Josh Gill cult? And what's the cult motto? How big are the buddy Josh Gill figurines? <laughs> uh, it's it's me Gilford to the Brimley. <laughs> That's our celebrity. F- Filford uh, to the Brimley. Yeah, that's our Tom Cruise of our cult. <laughs> yeah, Scientology got Tom Cruise. We got Filford, Filford to the Jim Brimley. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not what we called him earlier, but I can't remember what we called him earlier. Yeah. I mean, Josh Gill is the leader of the cult. Uh, no, 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 no. Josh Gill is like our Kali Yuga. Our gay, gay our Right? Ga- like, <laughs> Gill is... Say gaiety. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yes. Argument could be made. Yep. Yeah, he's like Kali Yuga. He's like the thing we're trying to bring forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would argue it's Richard. I it's mean, you. Yeah. Who, for who could outthirst you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, that's right. He the whose thirst is unquenchable <laughs> shall... <laughs> Summon the gill. What was the thing I said this morning? Oh, yeah, because we're so moist. We, we, don't, we don't come off thirsty. I hated that. <laughs> you use the word moist in a business context. Yeah. I hated it. My, that was, so, dare I say, disgusting. <laughs> Sometimes I just say things just for you in uh, Well, I can tell you were staring right at me. Yeah. Like, you said, like you weren't even like addressing no, the No, room. no, no, no. I, I, I'm speaking in front of a large group, but I'm only ever referring to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would argue that Richard is the leader of the Gill cult. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the cult motto? I, I, fill me to the gills. F- yeah, 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 fill me to the fill gills. Fill us yeah. all to the gills. Guild to the brim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe that was a Wilford Guild to the Brimley. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Still, though. Yeah. I prefer Filford to the <laughs> to, Brimley. To the Brimley. Yeah. Uh and then how big are the buddy... What is a buddy Josh Gill figurine? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either. Is no. a buddy figurine like a sex thing? In, in that case, life size. <laughs> yeah. A big blow-up doll? Yeah. I think that would be the next logical step in your transgressive <laughs> gift giving would be for you to make a blow-up doll of Josh Gill and send it to him. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with you. I know, but how come it's only me? I'm just saying like that... Because everything is uh, about you. <laughs> this is, it's always been about you. You know, you could just make like a black canary one. It'd be a gift I'd actually use. It was. <laughs> it was gross. <laughs> it was Reed Barry. <sighs> Are you boys smoking cigarettes? It was weed Barry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's too many episodes ago. We can't bring that back. I'm really good at this game. I was leet, Bear. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Who here, uh, who- was it you that went snowboarding yesterday? Yeah. It was skied, Barry. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, no, Richard's in charge of the guild cult. The motto is guild to the brim. Yeah. Uh, or, or yeah, uh, fill me to the gills. Either. Yeah. Um, I don't know what buddy Josh Gill figurines are, but I assume it's a disgusting sex act. Yeah, I'm I'm going to fuck it no matter what oh, it is. Jesus. Let's just leave it there. Oh, no. Next question comes from Diaper Gal Kate, who asks, which group is is the most helpful cult or secret society. Ooh, see, here's the thing. Court of Owls. <laughs> I think we call a cult a cult because it is not improving society. Sure. Like, I, the word cult, mm-hmm. it's not just a coincidence that they're bad. Like, yes. the word implies that they're bad. Yes, yes. There is no good cult. I think if there was, like... And also, if something that is, is doing, called a religion, and also if something is doing good, wouldn't you but want to encu- wouldn't you want to encourage more people to do it? Yes. So you wouldn't be secret. Yes. Like the secrecy implies yeah. 
badness and then it gets reinforced because of the secrecy you know what i mean yeah but cults aren't necessarily secret that is true yeah i can't think of a good cult though in dc or real life i mean dc is a cult what yeah absolutely not (laughs) how dare you speak about this thing i love that way (laughs) heathen yeah heretic burn him <laughs> the description the, the 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 dictionary description of a, a cult is a small religious group so specifically religious in some sort of capacity yeah that is not part of a larger or more accepted religion and that has beliefs regarded by many people as extreme or dangerous a situation in which people admire and care about something or someone very much or too much yeah <laughs> well that certainly doesn't sound like me yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the fans of this podcast. Let's we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> um. But let's let's do the thing where we say like maybe which even villainous or whatever organization, which one has the most quote unquote relatable goal or something. Court of Owls is out because that's just class oppression. Sure. And I wouldn't want to do the that. League of Assassins in the early days when it was kind of like an eco-terrorist thing. Yeah? Sure. I mean, they're doing it poorly. It's not the way to go about things, but like the stated purpose yes. is, was at least on paper slightly noble. Sure. Uh, Cobra's out. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Because they literally want something that will destroy everything and bring in like an age of chaos. Yeah. Like they they're not like Kali Yuga's gonna show up and give us universal health care. Like they're, they're not pitching that. No. <laughs> um you know, you, you, there's arguments to be made about the Illuminati. That's also like a class kind of warfare thing. But the interesting thing about the Illuminati is the idea is that they're meant to be like an intellectual cult. That it's like mm-hmm. people cannot be trusted to make the right decisions for themselves because they can be misinformed and misled and stuff like that. But us, the smartest people in the room, we can uh, we can guide humanity or whatever. Yeah. Of course, they're mis like they're wrong. You know, and that's bad. But again, if we're talking about the stated goal on paper, you know, it's closer to the mark. Black Glove, again, is out. Um, You know, the Church of Blood is out. That's about, like, violence and indulgence and all that kind of shit. Like, they're not really helping anyone. Um, I guess you could say the Cult of Connor, like the Resurrection Cult, is technically after that but it's pretty selfish they only want to resurrect people they care about you know what I yeah mean? like um that's not necessarily it either um god other cults uh order of the van helsings yeah I'm, uh, yeah i yeah i think it's all getting a little oh the Klu Klux clan <laughs> yeah do you know what yeah <laughs> um yeah, you know, like the Order of San Dumas, that's like a religious fanaticism. I'm not on board with that. I Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess I'm saying the League of Assassins? I mean, yeah. Or technically the Illuminati? What, what about, yeah, the Illuminati is probably the only other one, right? Or what's the one that uh, Martian Manhunter is part of? The Detective Guild. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're right. We haven't talked about that one. Detective Guild. You're right. Detective Guild takes it because they're all heroes. Yes. And they just like solving things. They're a bunch of fucking They're dorks. not really like a cult. As much as they are a because they're not club. Like, they're not like, and we do it all to appease Cluzor, the master <laughs> of Clu. Like, they're not <laughs> doing that shit. Um, but no, it's, like, a, it's a club. But as a secret <laughs> yeah. organization. Yeah, sure. Yes, they are objectively the most helpful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're 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 just a club. They like <laughs> they just like get snacks and yeah. like solve puzzles. They're fucking dorks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's leave Reddit and head on over to the doc phone. <gasps> doc in the phone, and you're no. The docs. Don't take the idea from Doc Score. Doc phone is just uh, bring bring. <laughs> God, we're so clever. Bring bring. Okay, let's see what the doc phone has to say. Hey, guys. 
guys is Ryan Putney. You feel free to keep mispronouncing my last name, though, because you guys are the only ones that let you do that. <laughs> Not much like I can do to stop you. But anyway, to my question right. for this week's podcast about uh, secret organizations uh, or cults, would you consider the League of Assassins technically a cult? Yes. And if so, who do you think would take, who would win a fight? Or who is the better organization you feel? The League of Assassins or the Court of Owls? Keep the great work, you guys. Love what you do. And I will keep, try to keep calling because I know you guys haven't had many phone calls. Goddamn right. So if you're nasty or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. This, now it's getting awkward. I need to hang out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ryan Putney. <laughs> Cut out that bit where he says we don't get many calls. Yeah. We always get calls. Yeah. Prove me wrong. I don't know what you mean about saying incorrectly. I think we're saying the same thing. Ryan Putney. Yeah, Ryan Putney. Yeah, Ryan Putney. <laughs> yeah, we're saying, we're saying the same thing. Yeah, he's exactly. <laughs> um, uh, so, I yeah. Mean, short is, version. Is League of Assassins a cult? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, would say so. There is a sort of religious... Uh, like they do put Rachel Ghoul on a pedestal. You well, yeah. You He's, think of like the ritual of him rejuvenating yeah. or coming back to life in yeah. the Lazarus pit and stuff like that. That like feels it, like a religious experience. Yeah. There's a lot of like kind of like ritual, ritual. and tradition and these sort of like there's rules and ranks yeah, and yeah, training yeah. and like yeah. it fits, I think, all of the major definitions of it. You know, they believe in a specific purpose and things like that. They're like fanatical. They'll yeah. literally die for him. Extremists. Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, yeah, I think it takes all the boxes. I would definitely call the League of Assassins a cult. Definitely. Um, who would win in a fight? Court of Owls or League of Assassins? My money's on League, League of, of Assassins. League of Assassins, yeah. The, the talents are formidable. For sure. Like, individually, better than most of the Assassins in the League of Assassins. Really? Who trains the talents? I mean, there's all they, they were each trained... Like by the one that they supplanted. These yeah. are all of the past talons of the sure. entire Court of Owls. So they have all of this like insane training for centuries. Sure. And then they're brought back to life. They're undead. You break their bones, oh, they snap yeah. it back into place. They yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, like the extremely formidable once the, the Court of Owls still develops that like Electrum kind of process to bring them all for back. For sure, yeah. And shit. Um, cause they're not even just zombies, right? Like they're, they could think they could talk, mm -hmm. you know, it happens to Calvin Rose after he dies, he gets brought back. The butcher of Gotham is this like enormous giant, like Bane sized Talon from like the 1800s or whatever. That's yeah. like maniacal and shit. And he, he talks and laughs and like gets in your head and shit. I think like individually I'd put Talons over the various assassins of the league of assassins with a few exceptions, but but as an organization, you know, the sort of cohesive training, Rachel Ghoul kind of all they need to do is figure out the cold thing. Also, the League of Assassins bases in the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> so it's already pretty cold. Yeah. I think there's a tactical advantage. For sure. Um, and I think once they figure that out, the talents are fucked. Definitely. Because it's the sort of precise, like the incision kind of way that the League of Assassins works. Like, they're not going to dance around a weakness once they know it. They're just going to go for it. Yeah. So I think I'm giving it to the League of Assassins. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's... Oh, no. Did we answer the, the rest of the question? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Let's leave the Doc phone and head on over to the Doc's Cord. Uh, Doc's Cord. We get the song and it goes like this. We're a Ducks American Scored. <laughs> oh, we're a Ducks American Scored. All right. Sure. I, what I like is how smooth and not clunky it was. Yep. <laughs> sweaty. <laughs> to quote Black Jack, that's yeah. a sweaty one. I mean, that's the best types. Yeah. <laughs> Budscape from Newcast. <laughs> so fucking bad. They podcast. Uh, the first question comes from the Tyrant Ryan, who asks. Has the Doc Scored become a cult? Would we be able to compete with some of the better, worse, cults of the D of DC? I mean, yes. 
<laughs> and yes. <laughs> Absolutely a cult. Yeah. Mostly because of how intense the worship of me is, I would say. I don't I don't remember seeing any it's of that. It's definitely my experience. No, I don't I've never that. logged onto the Doc Squad and regretted it. <laughs> There's there blood coming out of your ears. Uh, <laughs> I'm not supposed to lie this hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say there. I'd say there are cultish tendencies. The problem is, is I that- actually, <laughs> you know, who I actually think the Dog Squad venerates more than, uh, more than otherwise is Bruno. Oh yeah, I think there's a lot of Bruno love in there. Yeah, it's a lot of sort of. The problem is, is that the nobody like there's so many people vying for the the top. There are there. I mean, but I think is that not also a defining feature of a cult? Is that everyone thinks they're next in line or that it's their time? Yeah, but who is at the top? Well, but it's the pa- internal power struggle of the cult. We're gonna get a bunch of sects. Yeah, because who's the one that's like betting uh, the the most people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's the real question. Um, I. A hundred percent, I would put the Doc Squad up against Cobra. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's all we need to say. Because I'm a better god than an Eldritch Snake god. That, again, I don't think they're worshipping you. Pretty sure they are. I, I feel like it's not the case at all. I mean, I could log on right now. and just <laughs> I could pull up literally anything someone wrote to me, and I bet it would support my argument. No, you're the villain, but, but like a Dr. Light. <laughs> no, how am I a villain? How am I a villain? The, the, Bring the, endless joy. <laughs> I have no spicy takes. Yeah. I'm really easygoing oh. about my opinions. Yeah. I know that just as your employer. Super easy to get along with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of people share my taste in what I think is good. <laughs> you know, if I suggest something and say, I really like this one, people tend to agree with me later on. Is this like a bizarro thing that we're doing? Me and have good <laughs> comic books. <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, this podcast has become a cult, and I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Cult of personality, baby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Next question comes from ass ass shart ass. <laughs> <laughs> so happy so happy that you oh, did that I really like that really makes me happy remember that secret detective group from Batman 1000 yes we just talked about it among the collective knowledge of its members is there another secret society in DC that they are not aware of oh interesting so yeah that detect the guild of detection or whatever they called themselves so it was uh, Batman detective chimp Hawkman yeah. Hawk girl Martian manhunter elongated man uh the question slam Bradley <laughs> gotta slam him up there yes yeah, slam him up uh <laughs> What was the thing we said? What's the catchphrase? Oh, wham, bam, thank Thank you, you slam. slam. (laughs) Oh, it makes me happy. Yeah. Don't go gentle into that good vagina. Oh, no. Slam Bradley's period wipes. Slam them up. (laughs) Do not go. I'm so sorry. Good night, you princes of the main hole. Oh, God. That's so much worse than the one I did. <laughs> That's so much worse. That's so much more vile. Good night, you you princes of poon. Yeah. <laughs> you you kings of decrease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like... He's just like a pickup instructor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. These are what I call decider house rules for banging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now go out into the night. If you apply decider house rules in how you speak to women, you will have a hundred percent success. Rate. Yeah. First, you give them a cider. Make sure it's a high percentage. As the it's, hu- it's on the house. Yeah. Cider house. Yeah. And, uh, and you play by your own rules. <laughs> oh no. Well, listen. Oh, anyone no. that's a pickup artist is a scumbag. Yeah. Um. What the fuck was the question? So, oh, the guild of detection. Yeah. Yes. How do we get off of this? Oh, yeah, slam Brad. Yeah. Right. yeah okay. <laughs> you did this. Yeah, I did. Um, so they are like the world's greatest detectives. Yes. And you're right. They all have had their own adventure. I mean, fucking Hawkman and Hawk Girl have the knowledge of like thousands, centuries, of, yeah. thousands of lives. And Martian Manhunter 
has like the repository of like Martian knowledge and all this kind yeah. of shit. And elongated man can literally like smell a mystery. <laughs> um, you know, the, the question is, you know, uh, depending on the version kind of slightly shamanistic, but also sees like the connections between previously unconnected things and stuff like mm. that. So, is it feasible that between all of them and Batman, the so-called world's greatest detective, <laughs> who was the last one, to who's join. the last one to get there? Yeah, is it possible that there is a secret out there that they are not yet aware of? And I think the answer is yes, but we don't know what it is because they haven't. Because if they don't know it, yeah. we definitely don't fucking know it. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Next question. From 81% to greater. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell me I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, give me the other 19%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's all I've got. 19%? Yeah. It's all that's in the tank. Yeah. <laughs> if you were going to measure it in percentage, it was it's 19. Percentage of what? Dick. But of, like, what? <laughs> like, the maximum dick? No, of, like, just any dick. Like, the scientific principle of absolute dick. Yeah. The most dick you could yeah, possibly yeah. have. I got 19%. Oh, my that. God. He's reached absolute dick. dick. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to write a comic book called Absolute Dick. Like, we could make that happen. <laughs> uh, He's also a detective. Well, obviously. Oh, yeah. God. All right. And his penis is like a divining rod for solving the crime. Oh, I actually don't hate this idea. Yeah. That's fit to print. <laughs> absolute dick yeah and he's not let's say he's a not a really nice guy yeah <laughs> he's not a nice guy he's a detective and his penis points towards crime he's an absolute dick his penis points towards crime actually i don't, <laughs> oh, I don't think i like oh, this at no. all never oh, mind no no I'm that out. fell apart real quick sorry dragons i'm out <laughs> out. it's not my fault my penis points towards crime What was the question? Now, where's my water polo team? <laughs> Jesus. You like that joke I told you the other the other week? What's the worst part about water polo? Watching the horse drown? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how you play. Uh, what? 81% degraders <laughs> ask, what sort of conspiracy theories would be popular in the DC universe? Since it's a world of where everything could really happen... How ridiculously extreme could they get? I I have a slight theory about that. I think there should be a conspiracy theory that uh, that Jesus wasn't all he was cracked up to be. Like, he definitely existed. He was the first superhero. He definitely existed. Yeah. This is the, the, the but theory. But I think the, the conspiracy theory is, like, there's so many other more powerful yeah. characters. Like... And Jesus just like died on a cross. Like I bet he's not really the son of God. Oh, you know, like I think yeah. the conspiracy theory is that is that he like lied about his parentage. He's still influential and, and everything. Uh, and you know, probably when he gets to heaven, gets imbued with some stuff. <laughs> but I, if you look at the proof, if you look at the can, proof, can do I, your own research. Can Jesus I tell you is something? just like a guy, and he's not the son of God. Can I tell you which something? Which is also my real world opinion of Jesus. Can I tell you something? Yeah. As a Jew, that's already an opinion. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's not a conspiracy. That's like at a all. big thing between. I was most of the way through it, and I was like, "That's what I really think." That's and also like, just a big difference between Christianity and Judaism. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, you're right. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's just the likely answer. Answer. You're right. <laughs> Never mind. I like that. There's like a secret call of people who are trying to figure out what heroes' like real identities are. Oh sure, yeah, but but that's not a conspiracy. I think theory. there's a conspiracy that Lex Luthor is Superman. <laughs> Well, yeah, we've talked about that one. Yeah, we've yeah we've talked about the Superman and Lex in cahoots thing. Yeah, where Lex, Superman knocks down the yeah, odd building yeah. in a fight, and Lex swoops in and buys it at rock bottom prices. Yeah, yeah, buys the property. I think there's a conspiracy that matches Malone is uh, is Bruce Wayne. No, there's not. Uh, no, is uh, Batman? No, uh, uh, no, no, that couldn't be it. It's yeah. me. Bruce matches Malone. Matches man. <laughs> Me. Bat match. Uh, matches man. Yeah. No, Malone. it's not that people think it's Bruce Wayne. It's that they think it's Batman. <laughs> yeah. They still haven't figured out the Bruce Wayne angle. Uh, of that's it. fine. It's just like, guys, we. Matches Malone is it's Batman. Batman, right? Yeah. 
Matt just came in with like black makeup around his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and he smelled like stinky rubber. Yeah. I'm I'd say I'm about eighty percent yeah. sure he's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, what other consp- yeah. What sort of conspiracies would be popular in that the they're DC in a universe? comic book and not I mean like but I, but like the the way that we think we're in like a uh, uh in the matrix? Well, or like what's it called? The um like we're a computer simulation? Yeah. They think they're in a comic book. They're like I'm fairly certain there was a guy named like Morrison or something. But here's something. the thing, they are in a comic. Book. I know, but do the, do the general public know that? Well, I I mean they might now post death metal. They know about the multiverse. They essentially know that they are all kept alive by the power of story. Oh, uh, maybe they don't know specifically that comic books are the windows to other earths, but like, God, it's only a hop, skip and a jump. A f- fucking global pandemic put everybody into the, f- into therapy. Could you imagine what it's like to live in the DC universe? I mean, I mean, here's the thing. They're kind of dealing with it, but like, Really, I mean, really. I mean, you can't. You can never write a comic like that. Well, this is what really would happen. That doesn't. You can't do that. But the idea. You're right. Like the global trauma yeah. of essentially learning you're only real because you're thought of as real. Yes. I mean, it's it's the craziest conclusion of the. I think, therefore, I am. Yeah. Where it's like literally, if people stopped thinking about us, we wouldn't exist. Yeah. It's almost like they did that on Supernatural. Oh my, my god. Um yeah. Yeah, what other what well what are other popular conspiracy theories in the real world? I mean, the government like, control. Yeah, cabals of powerful people. I mean, like all of those would still exist because they would be routinely proven. Yeah, yeah, that's, Superman would be like found another. Like, <laughs> that's not even a conspiracy anymore. That's just someone being like I think this is probably I think it. it's only a conspiracy theory cuz people are just guessing what the cabal is and yeah, who's in it. Yeah, what's the next one? Like they yeah. don't like what is their angle? They just that's the bits they don't know, but I guess like our real world, we know that they're out there, we just don't know the details. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um yeah. I don't know. I don't know what other conspiracy. Th- I mean, like the moon landing thing. There's literal aliens. I think. I think we've quashed the moon landing one. Yes, fair. It'd be funny if there were people that were like, "Yeah, aliens come to Earth. Why would we- we've never been to the moon though?" They still yeah. like. <laughs> Batman's never been to apocalypse. That's a soundstage. Yeah. There- <laughs> Where did you even get this footage? Yeah. <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah. The wind doesn't move like that on Apocalypse. Open your eyes, sheeple. Yeah, Crisis on Infinite Earths was an inside job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The antimatter wave doesn't burn hot enough yeah. to destroy reality. <laughs> Crisis truther. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Crisis actually happened. Do you know the monitor actually knew about Crisis and didn't, yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. warn anyone? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What a weird thing, because it's like a thing that like a retcons of it doesn't really exist. I think to most people, so it's like that didn't happen. It's like, well, it didn't, but it did. Well, it did happen though. Yeah, that's the that's the new retcon is oh. that all of it happened. Oh, and that people are aware of that. Yes, it happened, but don't know what their lives were before, or they kind of have memories of like they have memories from across their different iterations. <laughs> and or... so when people go like, wait, but that happened five years ago. I didn't meet you until now. Then they go. That's probably because of it was the, a crisis thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's that's like, so fucked up for people who live in that universe. It's fucked up for the. It's way easier for readers because you just go like, yeah, great, whatever, and you kind of like it to off. be, but to be those people where it's like we just met, but I have memories of you yeah. ten years ago. It's like, oh, it's probably from when a giant cosmic being erased yeah. everything. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what's on Netflix? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. Like the, the collective trauma of. Of that is pretty wild. Also, is it happening on all worlds across the universe? Yeah. Is it only the people of Earth who are aware? Oh, that's weird. Of that. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. All right. Next and last question from Cosmo Nut. I, that's though. It's Cosmo Nut. Cosmo Nut. Forgotten. Forgotten. Cosmo Nut. Forgotten. Gone, but not. F- oh, I see. Cosmo Nut. Forgotten. Yeah. Cosmo nut and forgotten. Mmm, so smooth. <laughs> so smooth and creamy. That's not out That yet. hasn't come out. <laughs> that hasn't yeah. come out yet. Yeah, yeah. That definitely hasn't come out. Yeah, listen for the double dose on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Is it that this this one? Or I is think it the next one? one? I mean, I guess it depends what order you release them, which again is a crapshoot. Yeah, you never know. 
That's the fun of this podcast. <laughs> the fucking 9 11 fiasco. <laughs> You're just talking about the event, not anything specific. What a fiasco. Yeah. <laughs> God, easy, harsh words. Yeah, they could have done it so much better. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> if I was on that plane. I would have hit three towers. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what Mark Wahlberg it's meant. Like the the anti-Steve Rennes easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> He didn't. He didn't mean he would stop it. Yeah, he yeah. meant he would do, do a it better more. job. Yeah. I would do a better job of it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, Cosmo not asks, who killed JFK in DC, or did his head just do that? And the conspiracy is it was a cover up, right? So JFK in DC, obviously still assassinated the way he was. I uh, still am dead. The way he was on Earth 33. That's the real world. Oh, oh God. Is this argument going to happen again? What? Didn't you get in a fight about this recently? No, I got in a fight about Earth 12. Oh, okay. But I'll fight about Earth 33. <laughs> you think I won't? <laughs> Remember that thing where you said you don't blow up and get mad? And... What? Hmm? Are you saying I blow up and get mad? Say it. You blow up and get mad. I guess I do sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll say the thing is you immediately back down. <laughs> uh, yeah. JFK. JFK. It's funny that this came up because in Superman and the Authority, like the relatively recent Morrison series, Morrison yeah. and uh, Mikhail Hanin. It kind of it sort of opens with the fact that Kennedy died. Yeah, like it was a, it wasn't stopped. Um, but at least from my recollection, as as far as I am with that, I haven't read issue four. They don't like solve it. Sure, I guess if you go by the opening to Zack Snyder's Watchmen, it was the comedian on that earth yeah. <laughs> killed JFK. Um, this is a good question. The like, I I pulled it up on the, uh, on the wiki, yeah. Because I was like, they must at some point in the comics have been like, this person killed JFK, yeah. Been like, you know, Vandal Savage being like, it was me, or like whatever. <laughs> but Kennedy, <laughs> yeah. Marilyn Monroe, Monroe was my wife. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, like I, it might have been somewhere in there and so i pulled up the wiki but it didn't it, the wiki does not say like was know, murdered by the anti-monitor or like yeah, shit yeah. like that like, it doesn't say anything like that uh appearance of deaths <laughs> it does uh, like superman's pal jimmy olsen number 89 oh my god i was just gonna say i'm gonna open it up yeah i was just gonna say is it my pal jimmy olsen yeah it, a pal. lot of weird shit happens in superman's pal jimmy olsen god i need to get that series i think um Let's have a little look here. That feels like a thing I would like. Uh, okay, Jimmy Olsen is transported to November 22nd, 2063 by the power of a magic <laughs> Indian peace pipe. Who's, oh, no. Where he encounters a band of space pirates called the Infamous Four. The latter are apprehended when they fail to observe the five minutes of silence and stasis <laughs> on the anniversary of JFK's assassination. What? So it's not that they they go back in time no, they and just, kill Kennedy. No. They go back in time and fail to observe the moment of silence on the anniversary. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So, uh, yeah, canonically, JFK died in uh, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, number 89. That's insane. I need to get <laughs> I need to get this series. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure a comic somewhere at some point. Sure. N hints or nods or something to yeah. it. It's not a thing I could just call up. Um, so I guess it's Lee Harvey Oswald still. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. You realize it's like no, it's Lee. It, his name is like Lahar. Yeah, the Oswald. Yeah. He's like he was a Martian. Oh shit. Yeah, <laughs> like it'll happen. I think maybe they stay away from it because it's kind of tasteless. Why? Well, yeah, and DC's never done anything like that. Well, it's never like they've never been like. They've never been like, how, why did Princess Diana really die? Yeah. Wait a minute, that's not Dodi Al Fayed, that's a Durlin. Like they, fair, fair, <laughs> they've yeah. never done like. They, I think there's certain things you kind of. Yeah, I don't even think they've really. They've barely even done Hitler. 
I mean, they, they, they did a lot of like punch Hitler in the face. Shit yeah, like that, yeah, but that's you but know. not like Hitler was actually a Durland. Yeah, like no, I don't think they've really done that kind of shit. They've done like the Hitler occultism thing. Sure, that's yeah, like yeah. interesting. And, and Hitler was fascinated and, by the yeah, occult. Yeah, like there's yeah, a yeah. Sort they of can basis do that, but it. like yeah, they still like are like these guys were still monsters. Yeah, they've never been like you know the ultra humanite has claimed responsibility for the attack of the World Trade Center. Like, yeah, <laughs> they don't do that shit. I think because it's maybe a little at a like tasteless. tasteless yeah 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 so b- the closest i can get you is that in the in the world of the f- watchman film which is obviously like a sub reality yes. of watchman yeah uh jfk was killed by the comedian all right yeah well that is the last question well there you go you know what time it is oh god you know what time it is can you smell i can't I yeah that's it no I no, can't I can't uh it's time for everyone's favorite game can you guess any of the character based on if someone does not read comic books can describe that character to us Ooh. I sent a photo of a DC character to my wife your wife my wife uh does not read comic books nor does she care for them she doesn't know who these characters are she sends back four clues describing what she sees what's happening to your voice I don't know I'm just having fun with it baby well, she doesn't know these characters she sends yeah. them back yeah I'm having fun. Get a problem with that, Jesus? We got two more of these to do. I'm, I'm playing around with the with the format. Yeah, that's the time to do it. Yeah, baby. Just wait till we have champagne next. Oh, are we having champagne? Well, not champagne, but we'll have some from wine. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't eaten since lunch. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> We're gonna lose our minds, and I'm reaping all the benefits. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. First of four clothes. I'm ready. Okay. Ish. Bald, but not beautiful. Me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not a superhero. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Bald, but not beautiful. Yes. Dr. Savannah. No. Dr. Savannah. Dr. Savannah. Um, Hephaestus. No. For the rest of us. Yeah, it's a Hephaestus for the rest. rest. <laughs> um, Luthor. Although I mean, there's like versions of Luthor that are not as attractive as most Luthors. No, he's he fucks. Okay, Luthor fucks. Make a note of that. <laughs> um, another clue, please. Next clue. Neck beard. Bald. And neck beard. Yep. And not beautiful. Yeah. Oh. Is it like one of the new gods? No. I mean, that's a. I know. I know. I, I, yeah, I know that's yeah. too broad. I was just trying to. Yeah. Um. Neck beard and bald, but not beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, the beard is a weird factor in here. Yeah. Uh, I also say I don't know how accurate that is either. Oh, okay, so maybe it's not a real beard. It's something with the illustration. Hmm. You want another clue? I do, yeah. Third clue. Dobby ears. Okay. Dobby is a free elf. Uh, is this like a, I wonder if it's like a, is this a legionnaire? Is this, um, he doesn't have Dobby. Chameleon boy. It's chameleon boy. What? (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) Wow. Whoa. That's impressive. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. I'm surprised. Yeah. The final clue would have been Ant Lantern. Right. Yeah. Okay. That might have gotten me slightly closer. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely does not have a beard. No. Yeah, I, that's I, the, it's the costume. That's yeah. from the cartoon. Yeah. 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 That is. <laughs> that's very funny. Wow. Million boy. Jesus. 
Sometimes you got it. Sometimes. Yeah. Every once in a while. Yeah. Let's not put too much of a spotlight on it. Yeah, I'm great. Nope. We would love Worship to hear. Worship me. <laughs> Was any of you residents able to get it that quickly? I'd love to know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how quick can you get it? We are quickly approaching the end of Doctober. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, I love Happy when, Halloween. I love when you get in the mood of the season. Yeah. Uh, do we have one more episode that we they can do. send clues? Okay. Well, they've already sent clues because we're recording it today because we're doing a bunch of recording. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So so, so next week's episode is the one about the scarecrow. Yeah. That you've already sent, uh, <laughs> sent clues. Yeah, I don't know. I know, in. I know. Um, and then the week after that, we're going to have a special guest and we're talking about the Aqua family. Super. So does, send questions about Anyone from sort of the Aquaman corner of yeah. DC. So it's not just Holy about shit. Arthur, Mira, Garth, Jackson Hyde, God, Dolphin, like, Tula, Merc, Black like Manta, second... Ocean Master, Siren, King Narius, whoever you want. We've only done like two of this. Is, uh, we are yeah. second one. Yeah. Jeez, of your favorite character. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm generous. I don't just make it about me. No, I can't be that. Uh, I do name everything after me. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but you can send clues for that episode or uh, just talk to us about DC or whatever on our social media platforms. That's right. Like our Facebook. Dr. DC Podcast. Our Twitter. At Dr. DC. Our Instagram. Dr. DC Podcast. Uh, of course, our email. Dr. DC Podcast at gmail.com. We've got that subreddit. R slash Dr. Underscore DC. And like we got today, you can also send us a fucking voicemail. Yeah, the doc phone. 208-917-3238. 208 917 DCEU because you're nasty. You are nasty. So fucking live up to it. Ryan. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and you can go to our website, drdcpodcast.com or .ca. Where all of our episodes are posted, and you can also buy our merch. Buy our merch. merch. Buy our merch. And we got a five star review. We love it from all of the different places that you can yeah. do it. Get creative. Can you be more creative than that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think you can actually. Yeah, we put it to you. Yeah, I don't think you can. I I, th I think this is the best you've got. You're gonna discourage them. No, I'm, I'm gonna want them to rise to the occasion. <laughs> I don't think. Why am it. I the heel? You made the decision. I I, I don't know. I, I think know. it's just easy for you. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. I should have done this years ago. I know. No, because I was more of a villain back then. Yeah, yeah we, might, we might have smoked too far. The yeah. Other way. <laughs> I sort of e evened out a bit, I think, but uh, I've started to appreciate comics. Yeah, there's some sort of weird osmosis thing yeah, happening. I don't like it. Us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, send those reviews if they're not on Apple Podcasts or Facebook. Send a screenshot and we will read it on there. Fucking we did, love like it. Like we did with this vibrator that. Sharon or Shannon snapped off inside her, <laughs> or just like that, like broke her vagina. No, it 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 broke when she took it out of the box. Yeah, so when she pulled it out of her, it, her vagina broke. No, 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 it broke. The yeah. vagina didn't break. The it, box it, didn't. Break. It could be her vagina. Hmm. Maybe I'm just saying. Interesting. So you'd think she'd say that. In the she's, one star review. She's view. being coy. <laughs> yeah, that's the place to do it. Uh, send us some physical mail. Yes. We're getting can... we're getting close to Docmas. If you want to send us some Docmas <laughs> so gifts. Graven. Yeah. Yeah. Give us gifts. Yeah. You don't do enough for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you're finished so making craven. that make, make that pyramid and then send us some gifts. That's so craven. <laughs> That's so craven. But yes, you can send physical mail to either Richard Eden or Reed Vanier yeah, yeah. at 301 Hogue Street, H O G E Street in Whitehorse, Yukon, Canada, Y1A 1V8. That's right. And if, it's a if you're young and cool, you can follow me on TikTok. Oh, that's right. At Dr. DC, oh, where I'm there. very young and cool. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so young and cool. I mean, you're getting some... I actually have to post again. But... Yeah, you've got some you got some some followers now. You've got I have so... a not insignificant number of views yeah. and likes and stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Enough to continue. Yeah. For e sure. Enough that I won't give up on it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um also We've got a Patreon. 
Yeah, patreon.com slash Dr. DC. There's a $1, $5, $7 level. Uh, all of them give you access to the Doc Scored, mm. our awesome fan community. Mm-hmm. It's a ton of fun in there. Uh, they're all great folk that, that having a great time. Yeah. At the higher levels, you get bonus episodes every week. You get video episodes about stuff that we're reading, all mm-hmm. sorts of fun stuff like that. You get to vote on episode themes, all sorts of fun shit. You'll get extra stuff as we're coming up to Docmas and, and things like that, too. So... There's all sorts of fun to be had, and it supports us. It keeps yes. us going. And if you want to keep us going even longer, yeah, the superior podcast, yeah. Ghost Facers, subscribe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Ghost Facers, a supernatural rewatch. We are going through every single episode of CW Supernatural. We're almost at the end of season three. We're nearly done like season three. Episodes away. Two episodes yeah, away. Yeah, but, but like partway into November, we will be in season four. Yeah, crazy. Uh, yeah, we talk about real world monster lore, behind the scenes stuff about uh, the show and the Bonkers. production. We've had some very fun guests. Yeah. It's a cool show. Go go, give it a listen. Yes. All right, boys and ghouls. Yeah, that's how we open every episode. This is the end, so that's a weird way. Oh, to... sorry. Oh, you were doing that for our I thought you were implying mm-hmm. that's how we did Ghostface. No, I was ending this episode because oh. we're in October. Oh, but that's not what October is. Wouldn't October be more like a have a scary, merry Halloween? <laughs> it's the spookiest time of the year. That blood's coming out of your ears again. I don't know <laughs> if they'll be crows. <laughs> so have a cup of fear. fear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We found it. Ciao, ciao. Adios. They always fight for what is right. Live with danger and adventure, they are men of my... This is a Brain Freeze podcast.